Becky McLean um, is a molecular biologist for 23 years. Uh, she is the nation's first successful biolab whistleblower. She has a very powerful story. She has lived a lot, what Jer Jeremy just was talking about, um, and um, she's become one of the most powerful advocates we have for worker safety and for public health associated with this technology. Becky. I just want to give my personal thanks to Tina Stevens from the Alliance for Humane Biotechnology. Uh, these are very important issues, and I come from Connecticut, uh, so uh, I've come a long way to give you a message. Okay. Is that good? I'll just try to hug you. Okay. I want to tell you about a dangerous situation that is crippling people's lives without concern because of a lack of protection for biotech workers and the public. Fifteen years ago, a 22-year-old woman employed at a bio-research facility went to her employer's emergency room. Her eye had become red and swollen. She informed the doctor that she had incurred an exposure through a splash in her eye to a possible simian herpes B virus. She was worried. You see, a B virus infection is 60% fatal in humans. And the best option for survival is immediate antiviral therapy. But the ER doctor concluded that an infection from her exposure was unlikely and sent her home with some eye drops. After failed attempts to obtain an appointment with an infectious disease doctor, this young woman desperately went from doctor to doctor who sent her home and neglected to test her for her occupational exposures. Fifteen days after her exposure to wor at work, suffering with excruciating pain and a high fever, she was finally hospitalized where she tested positive for the B virus infection. Des despite treatment in the hospital, her condition deteriorated. Vesicular eruptions occurred on her face. The virus began to demyelate her spinal cord, causing sharp pain, sharp spinal pain, and other body pain. She then began to experience, experience flaccid paralysis, seizures, pneumonia, respiratory distress, and finally death 45 days after her biological exposure at work. The lack of immediate and quality medical care for injured biotech workers is sadly not uncommon. And even more concerning is that many injured workers who become exposed and ill from advanced biotechnologies like those used within synthetic biology will be completely denied directed medical care for their exposure. I know, because that is what happened to me. In 2003, while working as a scientist in an embryonic stem cell biosafety level two lab at Pfizer, I incurred hostility and retaliation for raising safety issues, only one of which was the unsafe biocontainment of sample, samples containing the same type of B virus that killed the young biotech worker just described. Des despite my complaints, the unaddressed safety issues resulted in my exposure to a genetically engineered virus that was used at Pfizer without proper biocontainment. My exposure led to a frightful, painful, and debilitating illness that resulted in numerous ambulance rides, ER visits, and hospitalization. When my physician and I requested exposure records for the identity of the virus for my health care, I was denied by Pfizer. Pfizer claimed that trade secrets superseded my right to these records. OSHA and Connecticut Workers' Compensation agreed with Pfizer's position and also denied me legal access to these essential records needed for my health care. It was not only the lack of human dignity and lack of human rights that shocked and appalled me, but I soon discovered that the current regulatory framework that was supposed to guide the biotech industry to protect workers and the public was only a facade. It does not protect workers, it does not protect the public, and it surely did not protect me. 
All levels of regulatory agencies from state to federal failed in oversight. OSHA refused to perform a safety inspection in my department even after I had provided documents which showed exposures, employee illness, and serious biocontainment problems like the discovery of an infectious agent, infectious genetically engineered vi virus found in our break area where we eat and drink. I was told that I had no rights to demand a safety form at Pfizer to address and remedy our numerous serious safety concerns and it was, that it was completely legal that Pfizer had told me to stop documenting my safety complaints within the safety committee. Both OSHA and the state said nothing could be done when Pfizer emitted a mystery agent from a biocontainment hood which was known to make people sick into the air of our local community. I soon discovered that this failure of regulatory oversight came not only about from weak regulatory laws, but also involved unscrupulous relationships that exist within the government, academia, and corporate networks that align to hide unsafe work conditions. Unsafe work conditions and biological <coughs> exposures to workers in the biotech industry go underreported. Not only is there no national database tracking laboratory acquired infections or, il il or illness, but most often, workers become coerced into signing confidentiality agreements in exchange for health care or compensation for their injury. Despite this lack of transparency, it has been shown that unsafe biocontainment of human infectious agents do occur within the research community, as evidenced by horrible deaths and injuries. Yet our scientific leadership continue to deny the truth that advanced recombinant DNA technologies like synthetic biology can pose, can pose a significant public health and safety threat. Even recently, in advocating for self-regulation, synthetic biologists were allowed to publish in the prestigious journal Science erroneous and unethical statements that give the impression that after 40 years, biotechnology remains completely safe. I tell you, it is a lie. And you will hear stories from other injured workers tonight who also know it is a lie. Synthetic biology in engages in advanced technologies, including the development of infectious agents. Current BL2 technologies can transform an innocuous agent into a human infectious agent with capabilities to attack through your eyes, when you breathe, through ingestion, and also to a broad spectrum of other species. These and other technologies can cause a wide variety of known illness and even more alarming, new undiagnosable illness. Unimaginable human suffering and ecological disasters could occur if these advanced technologies are not biocontained and tested for safety. Public health and safety cannot be safeguarded today when we have allowed the scientific industry to be police, judge, and jury. We are in a battle today to get legal protections to save us from a lack of concern for workers, communities, and public health and safety. Local community grassroots efforts who call out for transparency and demand protections can make a significant difference. If not, one day you may be left holding your child or your spouse who has de developed a mystery illness or cancer and wonder why. Consider this. If this scientific industry denies the rights to biotech workers for exposure records for directed health care, what rights do you think you will have when one of these dangerous technologies escapes into your community? Take action. It is your only option for protection. Thank you.